Then in example two, the difference between these two examples, guys, in example one, let's just highlight the differences between the two. In example one, I give you the selling price of 100 rand per year. So I tell you that we've received a special order for 6,000 units at a reduced selling price of 100 Rand per unit. And you have to tell me, at a selling price of 100 Rand per unit, must I accept or reject? Okay, I've given you the selling price. You need to do the calculation. In this example, because it resulted in additional profit, I accept. If it didn't result in additional profit, if it resulted in a loss, then I would have rejected the special order and rather just had my normal sale. In example two, I'm now not going to give you the selling price. I'm going to expect you to calculate the selling price for the special order. But we are still going to follow exactly the same logic that we followed in example one. We only take relevant or incremental costs into account. In the last example, only relevant or incremental costs were included. Costs that stayed the same for both alternatives, so for example, my fixed costs were not taken into consideration. We are doing exactly the same thing because with special orders, we are not worried about covering our fixed costs. Please note, with special orders, we are only interested in covering incremental costs. Your fixed costs are already covered by your normal sales. Because remember, we are not dealing with the company's normal sales over here. We are dealing with once-off special orders outside of their main market at a reduced selling price. So we only look at covering our incremental costs. Let's look at the information we've been provided with. The following is applicable to a special order received from Job Enterprises. 1,100 kilograms of material X is required for this order. So we are dealing with a special order. We need 1,100 kilograms of material X. Currently, we have 100 kilograms of material sitting in stock that we purchased for 7 Rand per kilogram. The material is used regularly by the business and the current purchase price is 10 Rand per kilogram. Now let's actually just look at the required while we're here so that we can do the calculation as I'm working through the question. We've received a special order for 600 units and it's going to take four months to complete this order. We need to calculate the minimum price that they should accept for the order. So that's what I said to you. The difference between example one and example two now I want you to calculate the selling price for this order. So the required wants the minimum price. And with the minimum price, we only cover our relevance or our incremental costs. So first I've told you exactly how much material we need for this order. Now remember, right at the beginning of this lecture, I covered the rules of material with you. We need 1,100 kilograms. 100 kilograms are sitting in stock, which means, guys, I need to purchase 1,000 kilograms because 1,000 kilograms are not in stock. But I've got in stock already 100 kilograms. So if you go back to the information right at the beginning of this lecture, I said to you, if the inventory is not in stock, if we need to purchase it, we are going to use our current purchase price of 10 Rand per kilogram because it's not in stock, so obviously we need to go and buy it. So the relevant cost is going to be the cost to buy it. However, if it is in stock, we cannot use this cost over here of 7 Rand per kilogram. Please remember, guys, that is a sunk cost. That is money that has already been spent in the past. Sunk costs are not relevant. We are only interested in future cash flows. So, because this is something that is used regularly by the business, we are going to use the current purchase price. So it's in stock, so we can't use the original price, the seven rand per kilogram 
is a sunk cost. And because it's used regularly by the business, we are going to use the current purchase price of 10 Rand. I'm actually just going to go back so that you guys can see where I'm getting this from. I did discuss this right at the beginning of our lecture with you. Okay, so for the 1,000 kilograms that are not in stock, my relevant cost is my purchase price of 10 Rand a kilogram. For what's in stock, I can't use the purchase price of 7 Rand a kilogram because that is a sunk cost. So I need to ask myself if it's something that's used regularly by the business or not. I was told that this is something that the business uses regularly, so I use my current purchase price as my relevant cost. Because remember, if the company uses the material regularly in their production process, if they use it for this order, they're going to have to replace it in the future. So for both of these, my relevant cost is my current purchase price. Okay, so it's not too difficult. So if you look at our solution over here for material X, the full 1,100 kilograms are valued at 10 Rand per kilogram, the current purchase price. Then we also need material Y. 300 kilograms of material Y is required for this order, and they have just enough in stock. It was purchased at 5 Rand per kilogram. So it's sitting in stock at 5 Rand per kilogram. This obviously, guys, once again, is a sunk cost. Money spent in the past, it's not relevant. So we know it's sitting in stock, but we can't use the original purchase price because that is a sunk cost. So we need to see what else we are told about material Y. Do they use it regularly or not? We are told they have no foreseeable use for this material in their business. So they do not use it regularly. And remember, go back. If they don't use it regularly, is there maybe an alternative use or can it be sold? Must it be disposed of or is there no alternative use? And they will tell you in the question. So what have they told me? It's got no foreseeable use. And if we don't use it for this order, it's going to have to be disposed of at a cost of 700 Rand. So guys, here we have an opportunity saving. Okay. If we do not accept the special order, we are going to have to pay someone 700 Rand in order to dispose of this material because we have no use for the material. However, if we accept the special order, we'll obviously use the material for this order. We won't have to pay someone 700 Rand to remove the material. So that is going to be a saving. And once again, I'm just going to scroll up to make sure that you are 100% happy with what I'm talking about. So we were told that it is in stock, it is not used regularly by them, and if not used for the special order, it will need to be disposed of, so it means I am sitting with an opportunity saving. So you'll see when we do our calculation now, because it's a saving, we are going to reduce our cost by 700 Rand. So for material Y, we have a saving of 700 Rand. Then, machinery required to complete this order is reaching the end of its useful life and it needs to be replaced at a cost of 15,000 Rand. They use this machinery in all of their production processes and the machinery has an expected useful life of 10 years. So the cost of the machine, the 15,000 Rand, is that relevant or is it an incremental cost that is applicable to this order? No. Guys, we are told that they are going to use this machinery in all of their production processes. The only reason why they're replacing the machine is because it's coming to the end of its useful life. So whether they accept the special order or not, they still have to replace the machine. So because the machine is going to be replaced regardless of what they do, it is not relevant. So you can see the purchase price or the replacement cost of the machine it is not avoidable. It's the same for all alternatives. It is therefore not relevant. In addition to that, we were given the useful life of the machine is 10 years. So it's going to be depreciated over a period of 10 years. And remember, depreciation is not a cash flow. So the depreciation on the machinery is also not going to be relevant. Last bit of information. Fixed overheads are normally 6 Rand per unit. 
but they are going to increase to 8 Rand per unit for this order. Please remember when we are looking at relevant costing, we are only looking at incremental costs. So remember, in example one, because our fixed costs were the same, there was no change in my fixed costs, there was no relevant portion. However, now my fixed costs are changing. Normally, my fixed costs are 6 Rand per unit, and now they are 8 Rand per unit. So because my fixed costs are changing, that incremental portion is relevant. So the additional 2 Rand per unit multiplied by 600 units is going to be relevant. It is an additional cost that I am incurring as a direct result of this order. I've then taken all of the information into account and I can calculate my minimum price. And the minimum price is always based on only my relevant or my incremental costs. Now what I want to do next is just to highlight the difference between the two. We have calculated above the minimum price. How would your calculation change if you had to work out the cost for accounting purposes instead of for decision-making purposes? So above, this was for decision-making purposes. Because that is the minimum price for this order. So if the customer comes to me and they tell me they're prepared to pay 12,000 Rand, I'll accept it because 12,000 Rand is more than the minimum price. However, if the customer is only prepared to pay 10,000 Rand, I should not accept it because it will not cover my relevant costs. So that is my minimum price for decision-making purposes. How does my cost change for accounting purposes? And also, when we do this calculation, I want you to assume that we are using absorption costing and they value their inventory using the first-in, first-out method. So please remember, guys, with absorption costing, it means I include my variable costs and my fixed costs in the cost of my inventory, okay? Both fixed and variable costs are included in inventory, and I'm using the FIFO method. And this is a normal calculation of how you would work out your accounting cost, which means it's the cost that ends up going to profit and loss. Okay, what goes to my statement of comprehensive income, or my profit and loss? So if we look at material X, we are using the first in, first out method in order to calculate the value of material X. So for material X, we need 1,100 kilograms. 100 kilograms are sitting in stock and they were purchased at 7 Rand per kilogram. So those 100 kilograms will be valued at 7 Rand each for normal accounting costing purposes. And the extra 1,000 kilograms that I need to purchase will be valued at 10 Rand per kilogram. So that is my accounting cost. And it's using the first in, first out method, not the weighted average method, because you can see the units that are sitting in inventory are valued at 7 Rand, or the kilograms sitting in inventory are valued at 7 Rand per kilogram, and the new inventory that I buy is valued at 10 Rand per kilogram. We keep them separate. If it was weighted average, we would lump everything together and work out an average price. Do the same thing for material Y. We've got 300 kilograms in stock. Everything is already in stock, and it was purchased at 5 Rand a kilogram. So for my normal accounting costing purposes, that material has a cost of 1,500 Rand. We also know when we buy the machine, please be careful, when you buy the machine, we're going to debit assets and we're going to credit either bank or a loan, depending on how we pay for that machine. But you can see there's no effect on profit and loss. When we actually buy the machine for 15,000 Rand, it doesn't affect profit and loss because it's not an expense. We treat the machine as an asset. So you can see the cost of the machine is not taken into account. However, what does affect profit and loss is my depreciation. We know that the useful life of the machine is 10 years, so it's going to be depreciated over 10 years. And this order is going to take four months to complete. So the depreciation applicable to this order will be four months of the total 10 years. Depreciation affects profit and loss, so it must be taken into account. And for my fixed costs, guys, fixed costs for the order are 8 Rand per unit times 600 units. It's the full fixed cost, not just the incremental fixed cost. We're not looking at this for decision-making purposes. We are working out the actual accounting cost. 
So when we look at the actual accounting cost, that is my actual accounting cost. So please note the differences between the two. The only time you'll ever do this second calculation that I just looked at now is if the required specifically asks you to work out the accounting cost. If we are looking at a decision-making question and they want you to work out the minimum price for the order, then you look at relevant costing where we only take incremental cost into account. All right. I just wanted to highlight the differences between the two. 